Welcome back guys, it's craft time. Let's go ahead and get started. In today's video, we are working on some more busted canvases based on many requests that you guys have given me. So I am going to do two more versions of this, but this time we are doing them 3D. They do not have to be flat. It does not have to be a picture. You can take an item that you love and turn that into something fun too. These things are honestly endless. So we're just gonna start out with our canvas and our canvas board. I'm using a 16 by 20 and some plain old white tissue paper. I'm gonna go down with my Mod Podge and I'm going to mod do a Mod Podge layer and then add my tissue paper. You saw here that I wrinkled mine up. I really, really love the texture that the wrinkling or pre-wrinkling of the um, tissue paper gives. So that's why you see me doing that. You do not have to do it. You do not have to use tissue paper. You can use other things like fabric, wrapping paper, gift bags, decoupage paper, photos, um, pretty much cardstock any of those options would work just fine just remember that the thickness of the material you use will affect how you are able to curl your cuts so keep that in mind if you're wanting to do something more than just the basic rollback here you just see me again putting down those layer of mod podge and then i am putting down the tissue paper and pressing it down i am wearing just a plastic glove you can use a ziploc bag whatever you need in order to rub that down without the tissue paper sticking to your fingers and tearing once you have that down you're going to do another layer on top this is just going to really secure it and make sure that it is sticking nice to the canvas i'm doing the underside of the canvas here first i like to do that because then as it's drying you can still be working on the top part of the canvas so i'm just going to do this make sure i get all of the corners all of the edges and then i'm here you see me flipping over just checking some stuff out but i'm going to cut away the excess I'm just going to cut it here, not all of it, um, but just enough to where nothing sticks out over the edges whenever I flip it over because I'm going to be going ahead and um, mod podging the other side of it and the edges as well, and I don't want it sticking to each other. Once I'm ready, I am going to start in on the front. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just using plain old tissue paper. I have this kind of peachy light orange color that I thought would be perfect for fall. So I'm going to kind of lay it out, get an idea of where it's going to go. I pre-wrinkle it, make sure it's got all those good, nice lines in it. Um, this also makes it easier to not care if there's wrinkles and lines or make sure that it's perfect. So I'm going to do the same exact process. I'm going to put down a layer of Mod Podge. I like to just do a nice even layer. And then I'm going to push the um, tissue paper down. Now, if you're doing a tissue paper that you don't like wrinkled, um, just be very careful, you know, you put your layer down and then start and very carefully smooth it out as you go. I know there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. There's different people who use like heat presses and irons and things. You just would need to find another video to work on that technique because I'm not going to get into it here. All right, back to it. We are going to line up our tissue paper. And as you see, mine does not take up the entire thing. So I am going to make sure that I have plenty of excess on the edges because I like to wrap my canvas so that it's complete. And I'm just going to um, do as straight of a line where the two will meet as I can. I'm just going to Mod Podge on top of this once I get it all pressed down into the canvas. And then we're gonna move on to the second piece. I just wrinkled it up and now whenever I do it, I'm just going to kind of pre-line it up, get an idea of what I'm doing, and then add my Mod Podge and run that same thing back. We're going to do a layer of the Mod Podge, add our tissue paper, and then a layer of Mod Podge on top. At this point, I think you guys get it, but I'm trying to be thorough just in case you're new and you're new to decoupaging. So I'm just trying to be as helpful as possible. You can skip forward a little bit if you need to. Here you see me just kind of working out the wrinkles. I do have a bit of a big wrinkle here. I don't really care too much because that's where the canvas will be cut and you won't necessarily see that um, bit of an imperfection. But again, all of the other wrinkles kind of help hide it as well. So not a super big deal. Once I get that laid down the way that I want to, I am just going to hit it with that Mod Podge once again. And then we're gonna start in on the edges. For the edges, I just lift up the paper that's kind of hanging over I put a layer underneath it and then I use my brush with Mod Podge on it and I push it down starting from the top of it the canvas working down over that edge to pull it tight 
and I do this on all four sides and let it dry. Now we're going to work on the back and my back is a canvas board. If you're doing something this size, I would suggest a canvas board, maybe even a um, like a foam poster board or something. And I'm just going to be using some of the Dollar Tree wallpaper. I have this in my stash and thought it would make a perfect background for what I'm going for. And so I'm just going to lay it down and peel it back and two of these is the perfect size for what I needed here. So I'm going to line them up on my second one. I'm going to make sure that when they line them up, the lines of the wood are staggered and not um, exactly meeting up. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Like the lines on the wood, you know, they would naturally be staggered. So I'm going to peel off the back here and then push this next one down. And though these are sticky and have a good stick to them, I'm nervous that they're going to peel up. So I'm going to add a little extra security to them. Before I do that, I need to just cut away my excess so that's not sticking to everything. I pulled out my little cutting board here and I am just using my X-Acto knife to cut it away. Super simple to cut with the thickness that it is. From there, I hit all of the corners with some Mod Podge just to give it a little extra security and make sure it's not going to peel back. My corners will be attached to the canvas, so the likeliness of them peeling in general is not a lot, but I just want to make sure. Now, right here in the middle, it was giving me a little more issue than I wanted, so I just hit it with some hot glue as well, and I am just going to hot glue it down. I did a really thin line so that you can't see the texture of the glue you know, through the paper, but that paper is pretty thick, so it was able to hide it um, pretty well. Next, I picked up this um, little pumpkin set from the $5, $5 spot at Dollar Tree, but if you have a smaller canvas or want another option, they have those little pumpkin stacks at Dollar Tree this year too, and I was just showing you what it looks like versus what it looked like when I was done with it. You can really do whatever you want and create what you want with those if you don't want to do the five dollars those other pumpkin stacks were $1.25. Here I am just taking off the screws to remove these from the base that they were put on. They're just little small screws easy to do and I am going to remove those and then fold those metal tabs down flat because I want these to be able to lay flat onto this canvas board. This is pretty easy to do with my hand on those first two, but that big green one's a little thicker, and so I just used some pliers, and I straightened those out the best I could. And then I was trying to work with my layout. I always do a dry run on my layouts because visually you have an idea in mind, but it might not be what you thought when you actually get it down. So once I get it to where I'm pretty sure I want it, I'm just using a tiny screwdriver here, guys. Um, I do have a drill, but some of you might not, so I wanted to show you a way that you can do it without having to have any power tools. So I'm just going to kind of lay this down. I use that screwdriver to kind of mark the holes where I want them to go, and then I'm going to use that hole, um, screwdriver to poke a hole through. Now, I put a roll of masking tape underneath, and I put the center of the masking tape roll right over the hole so that I could push on the canvas board and have it sturdy, but then the... Um, screwdriver could actually punch through still because of the hole in the tape. So I'm just going to wiggle this screwdriver back and forth until I completely make a hole. And I'm going to do that on both of those spots, but then I need to do it up here at the top as well because I'm going to be wiring this in and I want to make sure that the top doesn't fall forward once it's hanging. For the top, I need to make two holes. That way I can run the wire through and kind of loop it around so that it has something else to attach to. So I'm just going to lay it here and um, mark it with the screwdriver. You can use a pencil to give yourself better markings if you'd like to, but I'm just kind of going with it. Then with these two, I'm just going to kind of lay them out where um, I think I want them to go. And I'm going to do the same thing. I put that masking tape under there, put some pressure while twisting that um, screwdriver and just puncture straight through. Now I'm just using some floral wire to um, attach these. I am running the floral wire through the back first and I'm going to do my twists in the front. I'm doing that because I don't want the wire on the back to scratch anybody's wall or be pokey. So I'm just going to run it through both of those holes and through the canvas and then twist it down tight. And then I'm going to flip it up and I'm going to work on the stem. I'm not going to tighten it all the way down until I make sure it's in place where I want. And then I will make sure that it's tight. So 
So I'm just going to do the same thing. Start by running it through um, the back. I'm going to go through both holes from the back to the front and then I'm going to wrap them around the little loops here and do my best to twist and tie them, get it nice and tight, and then tuck them away to where you cannot see them. Um, unless you're really looking for it, you can't see them. So I'm just going to twist them up, pull them tight, and then I'm going to um, tuck them away and then cut away any of the excess so that it is hidden and nothing's sticking out and nothing's going to poke anybody or anything. And then I'm going to start in on the bottom again. And I do apologize, I'm fighting some allergies, so I'm doing my best to talk through it. Anywho, um, now that I have that secure, I'm going to run those wires. I put them through already and I twisted them one time, but then I ran them towards the opposite hole just through the metal part, um, pulled them back to the center, and then tightened them down. And then with the excess, I just wrapped it around itself to make those wires um, all kind of come together so that they're not just loose. And then we can put the other pumpkins right on top. Now these two, though, they're together. They're only held together from that welcome sign. So I'm going to just make sure that they're nice and secure. Again, starting with running my wire from the back of the canvas into the front through both of the holes at the bottom and then doing the same thing that I did before. I'm tightening it and twisting it and then running them through those metal parts again, tightening and twisting it. And then I'm going to cut off any excess and then wrap it around to make sure that it's nice and tight and not going to go anywhere. From there, I'm going to um, add another piece of floral wire just to make it a little sturdy. You see how it kind of flopped up like that? I'm worried that whenever I sit it straight up that those that pumpkin will kind of fall forward. So I'm just going to add a piece here to the middle and cinch it down to where they're connected. And that way, whenever I cinch down the big white pumpkin, they're not going to go anywhere and they're going to be nice and secure. So again, ran it through, tightened it up, and then I just used those needle, um, those like small, those are actually jewelry um, pliers, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. We're going to use that and tuck those wires away. And then last but not least, I'm going to secure the top of this white pumpkin to the canvas. Again, I have two whole, small holes back there. So I'm going to run them from the back of the canvas through the front and then secure it down by doing the same method as before. I'm going to tighten them down, twist them up, cut away the excess and tuck it away. Once that's done, I'm just going to move these leaves and all of those little um, like spirals and kind of shape them a little better. I didn't like how straight they were. I'm going to pull them off the pumpkins a little bit to make them kind of more in the forefront. And then you can just see in the back just has um, a little bit of the wires and nothing that's sticking out or poking. My top canvas is now completely dry and we can head back to it. I'm going to start in on the bottom part of the um, of the canvas the first part that we did just use my exacto knife run it ar around all of those edges and peel off any of the excess I'm just doing this so that when we do our cuts depending on how far back I peel them you won't see any of those excess spots then I'll flip it over making sure that everything else is dry using my sand um, sanding block I'm just going to run it on the edges of this canvas and it will give me nice clean lines and I will be able to peel back all of that um, tissue paper that is excess. This is pretty simple. I like to kind of um, go in a downward diagonal motion one way and then do a downward diagonal motion the opposite way and it just peels right off. Now that this is dry and I have my Mod Podge on it, my tissue paper will be able to withstand some um, paint. So I'm just going to paint this up with a gold metallic. I, it's kind of like a bronzy metallic on this one or like an antique gold. And I'm just doing a really rough paint. I just love how it pops all those wrinkles out and gives it really good depth and dimension. However, I do want it to match my pumpkins a little more. So I'm going to come back in with a brighter like metallic yellow and go over top of that. It's not completely dry, so it is mixing in just a little bit while still keeping the integrity of that brighter yellow and I really really like how it turned out but again I'm just doing it really messy I'm using a chip brush it has like all that good texture and it's just popping out all of the texture from that tissue paper we're gonna flip it back over and we're gonna work on the front now if you don't have a fun um, tissue paper do what I did. I just used plain tissue paper and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to stencil it. So I have this fun stencil that just came from Amazon and I'm going to use both of the colors that I used on the underside to stencil these on. 
to do this, I'm just dipping my brush in both colors really lightly, dabbing off any of the excess, and then working in a circular motion to stencil this on. Before I put my stencil down for the next one, I always wipe the back to make sure any of the paint that might have bled through to the underside isn't there so that it won't mess up my stencil. And I'm just going to repeat this until I cover the entire canvas. I have a second stencil that I'm going to be using. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm also making it wrap over the canvas so that it looks like, you know, this was all done at one time. Um, I want the sides to be complete as well as the front. And then I'm going to use a second stencil. Again, this came in the same pack as the other one. And I'm going to add these little flowers in between in those spaces. I really, really like how that turned out. So think outside the box. Grab a stencil if you need to. All right, now comes the fun and slightly scary part of cutting. So I have another video where I did a bunch of different patterns of how you can cut and what it's going to look like. So if you're unsure at this point how you want to cut your pattern, you can check out that video and it'll show you what, how cutting it and what it will look like before you cut into your project. Now, I forgot I had just painted the underside of this, guys, and it was not fully dry, so double check your materials and make sure that it's completely dry before you start this process. I'm not going to stress. I'll be able to fix that, but do as I say, not as I do. I started out with my X-Acto knife just to get a good puncture through, and then I'm just going to come back with my scissors. They just give me a little bit more precision, and they're really sharp, so they cut through really well. And once I've cut back and I kind of have an idea of the depth that I want, I'm going to put this back on top of my project so that I can really see what it's going to look like and where I want those next cuts to go, how deep I need them to go. Um, and it just really gives you an idea of what your project's going to look like. So once I'm comfortable, I'm ready to move to the next step, which is I'm going to now cut. So I started with a cross. Now I'm going to take those tabs and cut them in half. And I'm going to... Um, just kind of go based on the image that's under on how far I want to cut those. This pattern that I ended up doing, um, I refer to it as the star cut because you have all those different points. And that's the best thing I can tell you is to lay your project underneath it so that you can really visualize what you want here. And then after that, I always play with my folds a little bit, kind of get an idea of what I want them to look like. Um, do I want them to roll? Do I want them to fold? Do I want them to twist? Um, and it just gives you a better idea before you actually put glue down on what you're going to do. Once I'm ready, I'm adding glue to the edges of all of this. This is just hot glue. I'm going to lay it down on top and press and hold firmly until it's dry. And then I like to go a little bit extra and I'm going to add staples later. From here, I'm ready to fold. I'm going to do like a ribbon fold kind of. I don't know, that's what it reminded me of. So I'm just going to crease it once and then crease it a second time. I love how the metallic in this, it gives those really deep highlights and shadows and gives a lot of dimension with this fold. And I really, really like it. So what I'm doing is at the first fold, I am running a line of hot glue across the entire thing, holding it down, letting it dry. And then I am doing the second fold and doing the same thing, but I'm putting the... Um, hot glue kind of on the tab of that of the little uh, of the tip of the cut there sorry I don't know what to call it anyway I'm just going to do this all the way around kind of positioning these how I wish after I'm done with that I'm going to be stapling my back on now I don't do this on camera because obviously I can't lay this flat so I'm just laying it leaning it up against my desk on a part where it's just like the top of the desk so there's not much of the canvas touching I'm putting my hand on the front of the canvas and then um, putting pressure to staple through and then I'm doing the same thing and I'm tapping them in with my hammer um, I'm going to do this because I'm going to be selling this piece and I want to make sure that this does not come apart on anybody so this is just an extra step I'm going to do you do not have to and then after that I am going to be adding on oh I'm so sorry I also touched up those spots that were wet and ripped I just went back in with that same color to kind of make them blend in all right once I was done with that and I secured the canvas and got it all stapled in I am taking some ribbon that matches and I'm gonna this is kind of in my head representing like grass you know usually you would use like raffia or moss or something but this is too elegant for that so I am using some gold ribbon that matches I am folding it up like a little bushel 
and then I am running a wire, floral wire, through the bottom of it just so that it all stays together in one bundle to make it easier to hot glue. I'm going to put it down in there with my hot glue and press it to make sure that it sticks really well. And then I'm going to do another bushel and bundle here at the top, kind of make it all come together. I did the same thing. I ran a floral wire through all of the loops at the bottom so that they kind of stay whenever I hot glue them. And then I'm going to add on a hanger. For the hanger, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to um, use this wire jute from Dollar Tree and then I'm going to hot glue and staple it on by using my hand to hold the pressure. I love this and would really, really like to hear your feedback in the comments below on how this turned out. Next, we're gonna be working on a winter scene. I'm gonna be using this piece of tablecloth. So this tablecloth came from Walmart. It's like an iridescent and I pulled apart the top and bottom layer. So the bottom layer is kind of like a, almost kind of clothy, plastic I don't even know but I peeled that off and it left this really pretty iridescent piece and it's kind of plasticky I've never mod podged plastic so I'm a little nervous but we're gonna give it a try so I'm just going to mod podge down the back of the canvas again this is a 16 by 20 and I'm going to rub this down in all of the corners and try to make sure that it sticks I'm a little nervous that it's not going to stick, so I put my heat gun on low and I just kind of went around on it and lightly heated it up so that I could pr really press that plastic into the Mod Podge to try to make sure that when I go to cut this, it's not just going to peel away. I'm going to cut away all of this excess to make it easier to work with because with it being more plasticky, I don't know, it was just causing me some, some stress already with it not, not knowing if it was going to stick, but then all of those extra pieces catching on my sleeves and stuff. Um, so I'm just going to go here in the corners, add even more Mod Podge, and then I'm going to use some full paints that are have some weight to them to hold those corners down. I'm just going to set that aside and let that dry fully before doing the top coat. This is my canvas board. So while that's drying, I am going to just paint my background. Um, I'm just going to use some acrylic paint here. I have blue and white. I'm going to do a winter sky. So I just put both colors down and I am using, I'm using a chip brush, but you can use whatever paintbrush you want to. And I'm just going to blend those together, not fully, so you can still see some separation of those two paints. And then I'm just going to dab my brush all over the top and kind of fade those lines away, make it look more like a cloudy winter day. You can use a different type of paintbrush, you can use a sponge, you can use honestly whatever you want here, a paper towel, scrunch up a paper towel and tap. It's just going to leave some texture on your sky and make it look a little more realistic when it comes to like a cloudy winter sky. So I'm just going to keep bouncing that brush until I am happy and then once I am done with that I'm going to start working in on some snowy hills. For the hills, I am just putting down some of that white acrylic paint and I'm just going to spread that out all over the bottom half of the canvas. I'm using a um, softer bristle brush for this one just to make it, you know, smooth out a little bit better. And I'm going to do the entire bottom part before I make the two colors meet because once I get some of that blue on my brush, it is going to stay on my brush, but we're going to use that for some shadowing. So once I get up towards that blue, I kind of smooth the two together and I'm going to use that blue from the sky to kind of make it reflect on the white snow. It's just going to give my hills some definition and um, make it not just look so flat and plain. So I actually, if you saw me pick up the brush I used for the sky, I'm just grabbing a little bit of blue off of that to help shade and add dimension to these hills. Once I'm happy with my shading, which you can see it's not a ton, it's just enough, I'm going to add more definition to the tops of what my hills will be by adding another line and then just slightly dabbing it. I'm not dabbing the paint away. I want it to kind of be built up like a snowdrift, um, and I want you to be able to see the texture of the paint when it dries. So I'm just lightly tapping my brush onto this. It might work better with a round brush, but this is what I was using it's whatever. Um, and I'm just going to tap that out. So again, I'm not tapping the line. I'm not blending it out completely, but I am tapping it to kind of disperse it a little to where it's heavier on the top of the line and then squished a little more on the bottom to where it kind of like fades into the hill that it would be in, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do this until I'm happy. This is just adding a little bit of highlight to the top of the hills where the light would hit and then the blue that you see that I added earlier that's kind of the shadow like in the depth of the hill. 
From here, I'm adding some chunky iridescent glass, whoa, chunky iridescent glitter to the tops of those hills while my paint is still wet. If your paint has dried and you're doing this technique, you can just add a little bit of Mod Podge or Elmer's glue or tacky glue to that and that would work just fine as well. I'm just going to be placing it on the top there and then grabbing some fine white glitter and just kind of sprinkling it all over the painting while it's still wet. This is just going to represent like that glisteny snow that would be falling in winter. From there, I just added a little bit more of that chunky glue, glue, good gravy, glitter to the entire picture just to give a couple of bigger snowflakes to my background. If you don't have glitter, you could also use a splatter technique where you water down a little bit of white paint and kind of flick it on with your thumb but if you do that you'll want to do it in the background and in the foreground once you're done now that this is dried i am cutting away all of the edges here um for some reason i didn't film me putting uh, the top layer of mod podge, podge on but i did do that i after it dried and I felt like it was nice and secure, I did a full layer of Mod Podge right over top, just like we did on the last canvas, and I let it dry completely, and now I'm cutting away all of these edges so that we can work on the other side of this canvas. So you see it cutting away really well. I kind of pulled on it a little, make sure that it was nice and secure, and I'm pretty happy with it. We'll see when we cut if it stays. Here I'm using some tissue paper, but I have the tissue paper with the glitter flecks in it because I want it to represent snow. I do wish this was more of a blue tint than a teal tint, but beggars can't be choosers. So I just did this same exact thing as in the first step. I'm not going to make you watch me do that again. If you need clarification, go back to the first canvas and watch how I Mod Podge on the tissue paper. I set that aside to dry and this cute little snowman is one that I thrifted and I think he's super cute and would make the perfect um, focal point for this scene. So I'm just going to remove the tags and wipe him down. He's kind of dirty. He was on a thrift shelf. And then I'm going to pop off his buttons. Don't worry, they're coming back. It's just going to make it easier to paint without having to try to paint around them. So I'm just going to pop them off and set them to the side. And then we are going to clean up Mr. Snowman. Oh, sorry, here you see me cutting away the hot glue that kind of came around the edges. When they glued it on, there was a lot of excess glue that wasn't taken off. So I'm just cutting that away to make it like cleaner whenever I glue them back on. Once I'm cleaned up and ready, we are going in with some chalk paint and I'm going to paint him a bright white. He's, he's looking a little sad right now. He's a little dingy. So I'm going to paint him up. He's going to take, I think he took two coats of the white chalk paint so I'm just going to paint up his entire body including the sides I'm not going to do the back usually I always am a, make a big deal about painting the back of my my things because I do sell my items but since he's going to be glued down to the canvas I'm not worried about it this time so I'm just going to carefully paint around his arms paint up his body paint off the side of his body and then I'm going to work on his hat I'm just using some black chalk paint and I'm going to cover it thoroughly originally I was going to keep that ribbon that he has on there but we'll just paint it back on so I'm just going to make sure I get um, the front the sides and the um, tips underneath the hat that way he looks good from every angle once that's dry I'm going to Oh, I'm going to also paint his buttons I'm going to paint those with just black they were kind of different colors at first but I just want a standard cute black <laughs> buttons for my snowman um, and I did make them buttons. I don't think it's on film but I took a pencil, um, a sharpened pencil, dipped it in the white and left little dots on my buttons so that they um, ha look like they have the holes. From there once it was dry I did go back in and do my second layers and I just made sure that he was covered thoroughly so that I could work on his details. I grabbed some red chalk paint and I just painted his stripe back on. That also took two coats, so I let one dry and then I came back in with a second coat. Here you see me with scissors and a popsicle stick. I am cutting him out a cute carrot nose. I'm just going to cut this down into a little triangle and then paint it orange so that he his nose has a little more dimension since typically it would be sticking out of his face. I'm just going to hot glue everything down. You see me putting his buttons back on and then I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on for his carrot nose to make sure that it's nice and secure. And then our cute little snowman is complete with the painting. Since I used chalk paint, we do have to seal it up. So I'm going to be using some polycrylic to seal him.
I want to make sure that he has good coverage and is covered from every direction. So I did that and then I don't think I showed it, but while he was still wet, I used some of that chunky glitter and just lightly sprinkled it on some of his areas. And I think it's super cute. I also did a light blue shading around his edges, but you can barely tell because it's just really um, light. And I don't know why I didn't show that either, guys. I'm really struggling here. Anyway, let's build up the scene. I have this little Christmas tree that I also thrifted and didn't know what I was going to do with. It came in a package of stuff that I wasn't sure I was going to use. So I'm going to use it here for the scene. However, it is snowless. So we're going to add a little bit of Mod Podge on some of the edges and tips of the brush or of the tree. And then we're going to add some glitter. So I'm going to use both the fine glitter and the chunky glitter to add some snow to this tree so that it doesn't look out of place and I'm really really happy with how it turned out. Then I went outside and I just grabbed some sticks from my yard and I'm going to make some winter trees so clearly the leaves are all gone and I'm just going to kind of lay it out get an idea of what this setup is going to be. Since I know I want my snowman to be my focal point and I want him sitting on top of the um, that first hill I'm going to go ahead and hot glue him in place so that everything else can be built up around him. Now I'm going to wait, I'm going to do the small tree in the back, the um, little one here, and I'm going to hot glue that one down, but I'm going to remove everything else until I put the front of the canvas on so that, you know, I want the trees to come out of that front canvas and not be in the background. So I'm just using a popsicle stick here to remove the extra glue so you can't see it. That kind of like seeped through. And then we're going to work on the big canvas. We are going to start by using our sandpaper and get rid of all of this excess tissue paper that is on the sides. And then we're going to start with cutting. This time I'm going to start in an X and I'm just going to cut it kind of to where I think it needs to be. And then we are going to play with it from there. So I'm just going to do this X formation using my X-Acto knife. And then I'm going to put my image back under there so I can kind of see what it's going to be. Once I pulled the flaps down and cut as deep as I want, this one I want to be simple, so I just did the X. I cut down as deep as I needed to, and now I'm going to be adding some lights to the other underside. I just picked these up from Walmart. They were $6. Now, I will say, I did not think about the battery pack. Um, So if you can find one with a smaller battery pack that you want to tuck inside your picture, like in the lip to where you can just reach in, turn it on, dip it back in to where you cannot see it, Keep that in mind but for me I'm just going to wrap these around and I'm going to end up um, hot gluing the battery pack to the back of the canvas board once it's all put together. Here you just see me wrapping those lights around. I did not want mine to be loose so I'm just tacking it on with some hot glue. I'm just putting a little bead of hot glue um, not where the lights are just where the wire is. I'm holding it in place until that hot glue um, dries or is tacky enough to stay in place and I just wrapped my lights around as many times as it took for them to all be secure. From there we're going to attach the two so I'm going to run the hot glue around the edges and put it push it down. I have my battery pack pulled out through the side of the bottom. I'm sorry that it's not on camera but that way um, it can be glued but then the battery pack can be accessed from the back. Once that was secure, I did the same thing. I stapled it, but I did that off camera because I can't really get my camera to set up to where I need to. Um, and then I'm going to do the same folds as the last one because I really, really like how that turned out. With this one, um, it's it's a little lighter than the other one, like the folds. So I am just going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to fold it once, run that hot glue down. And then on the second fold, glue it down. But then on that second fold, it gets kind of smashed almost um, instead of rolled, it's folded, which is fine. But I didn't want that. So I'm just using um, something that is round. You can use a marker. I'm using my um, X-Acto knife here. And I'm just pushing it through to kind of round those edges back out. Once I get all my flaps glued down, it's time to build up the scene. I want this tree down here in the corner kind of popping off the canvas. So I am going to glue it down and in its place there and let it kind of fall over the bottom of the canvas and then I'm going to add in the other two sticks now for that I needed to kind of play with them I need them to be flat enough on the picture to where I can glue them down so I'm just going to play around with them and see where they fit best 
And I'm just going to pull branches off as I need to. So I'm just going to pull that little stick part off there. And then I'm going to find out how it's going to lay best. I realize that that little spot that I pulled off just now um, needs to be flatter. So I sanded it down. And then I'm able to hot glue it. And it has a nice flat area to where I can hot glue the bottom of this. And then the top is going to kind of come out of the canvas at you. So I'm just going to hold that down in place until it dries. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the one that I'm going to put on the left side. I'm going to remove any of the sticks that are kind of in the way or keeping it from laying flat. Sand down the back to make sure that it can lay flat and then glue it into place. That is all I'm going to do for this other than getting that battery pack glued to the back. And I am so happy with this as well. I would love to hear in the comments below which one of these was your favorite. Do you like the Christmas lights? And yeah, like the video, consider subscribing, and give me some feedback in the comments. I'm going to take you in for a closer look, and I'll see you next time.